I'm amazed at the number of people that aren't using it. What's up, y'all? It's your intrepid songwriter here, chronicling my adventures as a songwriter, because nobody does that. In today's 10 minutes or less video, I'm going to show you something that you should be using in all of your Pro Tools sessions. So let's jump on in. What you, what you should be using in all of your Pro Tools sessions is your system usage window. The reason you're supposed to use that is because it solves a lot of problems and saves you from a lot of trouble. So let's see what's underneath the hood. The first thing that you see here is you see the CPU activity. When the song is playing, you'll see these bars begin to move. So let's play a little section of the song and you'll see what I mean. This is a song I wrote, it's one of my songs. This is called Get Your Praise On, but this is the dance mix or the workout mix. So you see that? So as the song is playing, you see how the CPU usage is flashing across the bars and also the total or overall disk usage as well as the memory. You need this up front while you're mixing, okay? Uh, if nothing else, what it will do is when you have a crash and you get that dialog box that says Pro Tools ran out of power, it'll show up on the system usage window and the bars will be red. You can see where the CPU, CPU usage has been exceeded. It's over 100%. So you wait until the bars come back down and then you start over. That's number one. Number two, let's find out how we get this and what's going on underneath the hood. We get it by going over here to the window menu and going all the way down to system usage. Just as simple as that. And then this pops up. Now what's going on underneath the hood of this particular window is we want to go over here to setup. And we want to click on playback engine. <clears throat> what you want to have checked is dynamic plug-in processing. What that means is that the plugins only kick in when there's actually audio data on the track. If this is not checked, then they will be on all the time, which will cause you more system usage. So let's check that out. So right now, dynamic plug-in processing is on. So let's listen to that solo section again and check out what the bars are doing. So let me put that here. So check this out. Now let's click it off. Let's click off dynamic plug-in processing and let's see the difference. See that you see there were many more surges and it was using much more uh, disk allocation all the time because with that clicked off the plugins are going all the time so that's why you want uh, dynamic plug-in processing checked at all times so that the plugins only kick in when there's audio data for them to process okay now the last thing I want to show you with this I want to answer one of the biggest burning questions we've always had is pro tools processing when the tracks are blank so in other words if there's blank tracks meaning that the tracks are filled in but there's no audio data there's no audio data does that make a difference in how much processing power you're using in a native system and that answer is yes okay so right now i've soloed out a section uh, and that's the same section we just listened to. There's nothing happening with these tracks, the backup tracks. So let's look at this again, and then we're going to take them away. So again, pay attention over here. Now, 
now all of these tracks where nothing is happening during that solo verse part we are going to delete okay because there's nothing on them there's no data on them during that verse section now let's see what kind of effect that has over here on our system usage Now, did you see that our disk activity bar didn't surge at all? Which makes sense because this disk activity is the Pro Tools trying to pull something from the disk. And even though there's no audio data, when the tracks are blank, it's still trying to pull something. It's still working. You saw it yourself that those bars surged. The disk activity bar was way over here. But when we cut out those tracks, so the answer to that question is, yes, it does make a difference. So what you want to do in your sessions is do something we call track cleanup. Okay, and track cleanup is where you find <clears throat> where there's no more data and you, okay, so like on this one, so we'll just get that and we'll get rid of all this real estate that's not being used because that would change our disk usage and then we want to put in a fade okay so there's no popping or clipping or sudden snaps or anything else that's going on and we want to do the same thing over here so when we have tracks that just have nothing going on until later on we want to delete them all together okay because I just as I just demonstrated that does indeed save us uh, disk usage okay so that's my quick production tips 10 minutes or less for today remember to get your system usage window out there have it out there at all times so you can see what's going on remember to check off dynamic plugin processing so that your plugins only kick in when there's audio for them to process and they're not on all the time. Remember to clean up your tracks, meaning then, because you see I've got a lot more to do here, that if there's no audio data, get rid of that because you saw the difference in what it saves in disk allocation. Okay? I'll see you next time in the next video. Remember, that's why I'm chronicling my adventures as a songwriter and a producer, because I'm trying to tell you all the stuff I wish they told me when I first started out. Later.